I'm just a kid became a recent viral hit on TikTok. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, obviously, we were onto something before we even knew what we were doing, you know? So it's really, it's, it's a, I, I, I love looking back on that record. I am here today with Mr. Pierre Bouvet, Bou- Bouvier. Bouvier, there you Bouvier, go. Right, I said it right. I think I said it right the second time. Yeah. <laughs> From Simple Plan, uh, Pierre, thank you so much for taking time to chat today. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys are getting ready to go out on tour this summer yep. with uh, uh, Sum 41, the Blame Canada Tour. Yeah. And I want to ask, like, how did this come together? But it's really all there in the name, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the Blame Canada, just a hilarious South Park sort of uh, tip of the hat. Love that song. It's, uh, you know, w- w- both bands being from Canada. I love to, you know, in Canadians, we don't take ourselves too seriously. And it's, I think it's, uh, we love the joke. And, you know, it's funny because we both came out around the same time. Um, you know, their first album came out in 2001, ours came out in 2002, and uh, we've really had parallel careers. You know, we kind of like uh, we were both riding the coattails of, of Blink 182 and Green Day, who paved the <laughs> way for us, and then we both had massive success throughout the world. And uh, and the cool thing is that we're both bands still active, still together, still doing what we do, and that's something that we're, I think we're both very proud of. Um, a lot of our peers have either called it quits or broken up or something. Um, so it's great to, you know, to look back on all these years and say two Canadian pop punk bands that are still doing it out there, you know, that is awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, listen, old school fan. I mean, I remember those early days riding around cars with my friends, jamming, you know, uh, 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 all, uh, the <laughs> no pads, no helmets, just no balls. pads, no helmets, just balls. And there we go. Killer, no I'm like, and my go. brain was like, does the pads come first or does the helmet come first and like i come and trust me actually that was something that we we had to there was a a large debate about what the order of it should be you know and we were a bunch of french canadian kids and uh our record label um which was really they were awesome people at the label back in the day in lava records uh and they were like no trust us guys it's no pads no helmets just balls okay and we're like you sure not no helmets no pads balls no 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 no." and it was a big joke because our our a r guy was like, trust me, I've been to funny school. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way of like winning an argument. I'm going to just exactly. do that from now on. No, 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 there trust me. Go. I've been to funny school. Yeah, yeah. I'm obviously right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the cool thing too is we're talking like 10 days from the 20th anniversary of that album. Uh-huh. It came out in March of, of 2022 or of 2002. Uh, so as you reflect on that album now, 20 years later, how uh, how is that reflection different? How are your thoughts different than than 15 years or 10 years or five years? Um, I think that uh, I'm just so grateful, you know, at the time, you know, Chuck and I had been in a band for like seven years prior than that. We, you know, been like a skate punk band that was called Reset. That was and then we started Simple Plan. And we're like, we want to make songs that are that are more pop punk, more like like 182 style, you know. And uh, we and of course, you know, as artists, as as songwriters, we have our own identity. We have our own way that we do things, you know, that's kind of like part of our DNA. And we came up with this sound that I think with the help of Arnold, our producer, that was kind of uh, its own little thing. You know, it was a little more pop, a little more polished, uh, but had that angsty sort of um, vibe that that uh, that we all wanted to sort of channel. And uh, there are, there are some things when I look back. That I don't like uh, for for the longest time. I didn't like the way the album sounded. There was some things about how I was singing that I was like, ah, I sound too whiny. But over the years, I've I've come to appreciate them as a songwriter and as a producer myself. Um, how that connected with an audience uh, in a huge way. I'm thinking of the songs like like Perfect, which you know to this day is a song that people come up to me and say like, you don't understand. Like my my relationship with my dad was so bad, and we connected on this song and. There's even one story that a, a girl was saying, like, I my dad and I had a horrible relationship and and her dad was 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 uh, ha- had a, a terminal disease. I think it was cancer and he was about to die. And she went to the hospital and played him this song and it, it allowed him to have this beautiful moment before he passed away. And I was like, holy like I, I never, you know, set off to to make music and have such an impact on people and. Uh, the fact that we did in so many ways, I, I look back now as an older man uh, and I just I have just so much gratitude that we were able to do those things. And 
I, I can appreciate what that record meant to some people. And, and of course, so, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, we've evolved a lot as a band over the years, but these, those songs have stuck around, you know, and like, I'm just a kid became a recent viral hit on TikTok, And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, obviously we were onto something before we even knew what we were doing, you know? So it's really, it's, it's, a, I, I love looking back on that record. It's, it's really cool to see the resurgence of stuff like that from, from yeah. back in the day. And, and like you said, the TikTok, and it brings uh, up something that was on my mind. So h- how much would you say like the, the sort of the current um, uh, perception and sort of spotlight on, on pop punk and emo and all that is, is, is solely due to, to Matt Cutshaw <laughs> yeah. and emo's not dead. I mean, those videos, man, are absolutely hilarious. And the ones that like, you've been, you've been in how many with him now? Two, three. Yeah. I mean like two or three. We, we hang out here. We, we talk back and forth. He was like, you're going to go to emo night next week or last week. And I was like, no, nah, I can't make it. Like, I think I'm like, go. I'm like, dude, go dude. Uh, but yeah, I, I love what he's doing. And I think, uh, you know, it's so funny how that scene has evolved because back when we first came out, it was like, you're pop punk. And it was like, we're like, we don't even care what you want to call us. Like we just do what we do. <laughs> and like, but you're not really punk. Or like, I'm not saying that we're pop punk. And then like emo came afterwards. It was like more like uh, this other scene that was kind of like, you know, I'm thinking of bands like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, but like so many bands came out that were more, you know, particularly emo. And then after those years went by, people sort of like lumped all that early two thousands pop punk into emo. And I, I, you know, I, I don't mind. I think it's great. I think it's a cool, uh, it's a cool way to look at it because I think th- those songs and those, those bands and, and what the records they were making and what we were making was really heartfelt, emotional stuff. And some people on the outside may have thought it was really tongue in cheek. And we had a, we had a tongue in cheek side of our, our band, but our, our, we've always put our heart and soul in our music. And like I said before, it has, it has had a tremendous impact on people when they're going through difficult to parts of their lives, whether they're like 12, 13, 14 years old, or even later in life. Um, and uh, I think it's great to see Matt uh, sort of like poke fun at it in, in a loving way because he he's all he's part of it. He loves it. And he he was in a band before and like he's a good singer. And uh, I just love what he's doing. I, I mean, most of my wardrobe is Emo's Not Dead merch, really. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not wearing my, my hoodie right now. <laughs> I should have given you a heads up, but you could have thrown. Yeah, it exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I, I want to ask about, um, you know, we talked about uh, the, the, the earliest album. We've talked about two and all that. You guys have a new album that's going to be coming out eventually. You got a couple yep. of singles out there. Just put out one with Derek from Sum 41. Yeah. Um, um, and it's been six years since your last album. Is that right? Yeah. So we had this album that's going to be coming out in a couple of months here. Um, we had this album done in the can right before the pandemic started. And then it was supposed to come out when we were doing to do this tour with uh, Newfound Glory, which got postponed. Huh. And so it was, it was scheduled to come out like summer of 2020. Um, and then just excuse my language, but like, you know, shit hit the fan. And, um, <laughs> and we were like, Whoa, what do we do here? Like some bands were releasing music. Some people were holding it back and we just loved the tour. And we, we also, you know, we're very, we're, we're, we're perfectionists when it comes to writing and producing music. So it takes us a long time. Usually a make, a make a record takes us about a year. So we felt there was so much time and effort put in this thing. We were worried that it would come out and there'd be a new variant or something that comes out or like Donald Trump would say something that people would, you know, would freak out over and it would be lost in the mix. So we said, let's hang on to it. Let's put it out after these three weeks of this pandemic, you know, and then the three weeks turned into three months, turned into a year, another year. And then at some point last year, we said, OK, we're still in this pandemic. Um, we don't know what's going to what's going to happen. We just got to start putting out music. We can't wait this long. Uh, our fans have been waiting for so long for some new music. Um, so, yeah, it's been six years, which is a little embarrassing to say. But I love I love love the songs. And I think they it's funny because some of the songs on the record you'll see when it comes out sound like they were written about the pandemic, but they were all done before the pandemic. So there's a song that's called, uh, I don't even know if I can tell the name, but it's, it, you, you hear it and you're like, well, this is about the pandemic. And we're like, no, no, it's not about that. It's, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's been a long time. Fans have been waiting. The response for the new material has been great. The antidote came out in December or November, December last year. And uh, it's been, you know, like 99.9% just thrilled people. There's always the 0.1% of people that, that don't agree with it. Uh, and then with the new song with the uh, Derek uh, for ruin my life, the, 
it's we're already at like 1.5 million uh, spins and within a couple of weeks the video is great people love it and uh yeah there really is a it's a good moment for our style of music you know and it feels like we're in some ways uh you know you, you never go back in time but it seems like it's it's uh it reminds me of early 2000s when Simple Plan, Good Charlotte, Sum 41, Blink-182, Green Day was all over the radio mm -hmm. where bands like ours were on awesome soundtracks for movies and you just couldn't get away from it. And now it seems like we're back there. So it's super exciting for us to, to have been able to uh, stick around long enough to see the second wave. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> and, you know, there's like a ton of great new school bands that are coming out too. And you guys are taking some out on on the road. You got Set It Off, which, which I know they've, they've been around yep. for a while. But Magnolia Park yep. is an absolutely incredible band. I think it's so cool that you guys are taking them out. Uh, yeah. Do you have any thoughts, reflections on kind of what's going on in, in pop punk and that scene right now? I love drawing inspiration from what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm continuing continuously writing um, and, uh, and I'm working with other people. I'm producing some stuff and I'm co-writing for people and I'm just inspired by what's coming out. I love the, I love, cause you know, pop punk now, if you look at MGK or other people, whatever Travis Barker's producing this week. Um, it <laughs> sounds like early 2000s, but it's definitely a modern take on it. And mm -hmm. I, as a producer, I like to listen to that and go like, whoa, that's cool, you know? And I'm also, it's funny because our third album, which came out in 2006 or seven, um, we were trying to push the envelope of where pop punk was going. And there's like some some beats. We had this uh, we had this producer, uh, his name is Danger. He, was, he did like Justin Timberlake stuff. He did like, he was working with uh, Timbaland for a long time. And we had these songs that had these like, and it was like, I think we were too early on it. Cause when it came out, people were like, what is this? And, and I feel like now because of the way the world's going and because of like, you know, inclusion and everyone getting more of an open mind and being less hateful and uh, which is a, such a wonderful thing. I think that people are ready to, to hear more of that stuff. And uh, I'm so glad to hear like, some meshing of styles and what these guys are doing now, like whatever, whether it's Matt Magnolia Park or, uh, or anybody coming out. It's, uh, and I find it inspiring. And, and, and I find myself listening to them and inspiring me for my next stuff. So it's like this weird, vicious cycle where I think that maybe some of those guys knew Simple Plan and like were inspired by what we were doing. Now, you know, it's going full circle and I'm, and I'm listening to their stuff. So it's really cool. That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, Pierre, listen, I really appreciate you taking time to chat today. It, it's been awesome to get to get to uh, talk uh, pop punk with you. <laughs> um, of course. Uh, I'm excited about the Blame Canada tour uh, hitting the road this summer. Some 41. You guys set it off Magnolia Park. Um, I, I'm a, you're going to I know you're rolling through Portland, so I'm going to be there. I'm going to go to Sick. that. Show. I'm so excited. Uh, awesome. um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time to chat today. It's a pleasure, man. So great to meet you. And uh, looking forward to seeing people out there. We're going to be touring a whole lot in the end of this year and next year. So uh, wherever you guys are out there, for sure, we'll be coming to see you. That's awesome. You guys heard it here. Uh, look for the, uh, the the tour dates on, on Simple Plan social media. You can check them out, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that, right? Yep, exactly. All It's all Simple Plan, simpleplan.com. Instagram is Simple Plan. TikTok is Simple Plan, all that stuff. All of it. It's all out there. Thank you so much, P. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you, man. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>